So, so far the mill dots are adding up, at least with the 75 grainers. No wait, wrong video. Okay, so this is a part two more or less of the Aero Precision 20 inch A2 style upper uh, coupled with the sponsor of this video, the UUQ 3 to 9 by 40 um, mill dot scope, or I guess they call it the AO scope, which is a, uh, I think that stands for adjustable objective because it has this adjustable objective lens. So this is actually my second sponsored UUQ video. Uh, they did send this out to the channel for free. And it's a relatively uh, very low budget scope. It's about 50 bucks. And I really wanted to put it to the test and see how it did at longer ranges. Um, obviously, as you can see from the intro, out to 500 yards. And just right off the bat, it did great. Uh, I was in very low light conditions. As a matter of fact, the uh, only two sponsored videos that I've done for UUQ, both have been done during uh, very overcast, cloudy days. But actually, I thought it would do a really good job uh, for testing because something like a scope, you know, you want to see how it does in low light conditions. And this thing actually did really well in low light conditions. Uh, I was shooting when the, there was virtually no sunlight towards the very end of the day, out to 500 yards, and I was still able to see the target. Now I will say though that 500 yards is probably the limit because I was not really able to see my shots. Um, on the target, I could hear the shots obviously, but I, at 400 yards I could see the shots, probably 450 I'd be able to, but out at 500 I was not really able to see the shots anymore. However, you know, like I was saying, this is just a uh, 3 to 9, so with higher magnification you can probably see your shots out at 500 yards, but that's probably probably the limit for this guy right here it was also uh, i think in between rains so there was a lot of moisture in the air and this did not fog up at all so that was also really nice for a lower budget uh, cheap scope and when i say cheap that's not necessarily a bad thing um, there's a lot of really good products that are priced at very cheap prices compared to what else is available on the market it is a uh, let me see if I can see it. One, two, three, four, five, six. It does have six mils on each side. Uh, I really like having mil dot scopes. That's kind of my main reticle uh, or go-to reticle. And the fact that this one has six mils is really nice. A lot of them sometimes have three or four. Um, but yeah, again, um, actually from the shooting footage, you'll see that out at 500 yards, I think I was only using the third mil dot. And this was zeroed at 200. So from 200 out to 500, you're only going through uh, three mil dots, which is 
really good for something like a two two three, which has you know a decent amount of drop after or a seventy five grain two two three, I should say. Actually, it was a five five six. This stuff right here, and this stuff I thought was going to have much more of a drop, but surprisingly, it did not. Um, out at five hundred yards, like I was saying, I was using the third mill dot down. And this stuff is my all around go to if I can get it out of the box here. So this right here is the Hornady uh, Frontier. I think it's a Hornady bullet, but it is the uh, Frontier uh, 75 grain, 5.56, five, boat tail, hollow point, match grade bullet. Way back when, when I got this stuff, it was like 60 cents around, and it has not let me down. Um, you know, right now it's a little more expensive than 60 cents around, but we are living in weird times. Um, ammo prices will probably go down, so... Please, nobody panic by. Please. Okay. So there are two major cons with this scope that we got to talk about when we talk about features. Because really, the two major cons are just simply quality control. So let's go ahead and start with the first con, which is this windage turret. And instead of saying left and right, you can see it says up and down. Or actually, it just says up with the arrow. But... They clearly, uh, you know, we're supposed to put the right and left, uh, uh, what do you call it, a little wheel on there, but they put the, uh, the elevation one on there. So I had to learn that uh, adjusting it up was actually going to the right. That right there is just a quality control thing. I'm not saying that y'all were probably get that, but I sure did. Um, as you can see, too, for the elevation, it's also left and right or sorry up and down so it's not like i have the scope on sideways or anything but these uh the turret adjustments are very nice it's actually really nice clicks i'll go and show you guys real quick but listen to this oh yeah oh yeah i love good clicks <laughs> another thing that they screwed up on is the adjustment, um, the magnification adjustment. So as you can see, it's on nine power right now. If I want to go back down to one power or three power, I mean, usually you would take this elevated part and I forgot exactly what you call it, but this little, um, lever thingy and you would go this way on top of the scope. But I think they put this on backwards cause you got to go underneath the scope like that but these two minor things are really kind of the only uh, cons and they're not really hampering the performance of the scope in any way it's just kind of obviously quality control issues that they need to work out with their factory but um yeah i mean everything about the scope functions just fine and I'll, I'll get to the upper in just a second but i just want to go ahead and finish talking about some, some features that uuq wanted me to go over so mainly they wanted me to talk about this uh, adjustable objective lens and it worked just fine. Um, it, look at that. <laughs> it was coming loose right there. So anyway, okay. Three quality control issues, but again, $45, you can't really complain, right? So um, I have it, as you can see, out to infinite because I was shooting 500 yards and it goes all the way down to... 10 yards, I believe. Well, it says 10, but it goes past 10. But once I was at infinite right there, um, I used that for 300, 400, 500 yards. And all three of those distances were very clear, which brings me to the lens. It is a, um, let's see, what do they call it? The green multi-layer coated lens. Uh, green multi-layer coated lenses provide better visual effects and observation experience they reduce reflections and glare improve contrast and are resistant to wear and tear that's what they wanted me to say so now that i said what they wanted me to say i will agree i mean i have no reason to think that this didn't really do what they're saying it's definitely a clear lens um, you know on low light conditions i was able to see out to 500 yards just fine um, of course, I didn't really do a lot of wear and tear testing or anything like that. Um, I will say that 3 to 9 is pretty good for just about anything. And they actually say 
in the email that they sent me. They were like, it's the golden magnification. I think what they mean by golden is it's the ideal magnification. And real quick, uh, they just wanted me to talk about the illuminated reticle. I don't really use illuminated reticles, even in those low light conditions. I feel like that I could, as long as there's still some light out, I can, you know, and I can make out the target in the scope, I, I should still be able to see the reticle and use the mill dots. So as far as having an illuminated reticle, I don't really think exactly helps you too much. And I think it actually adds a little bit of fuzziness to the reticle so it's not as crisp. So it kind of takes away some of the uh, performance, but you know, it's a cool gimmick. So I'll give you that. And they just wanted me to talk about what you get in the box. So let's go through the box. That's funny, it actually says blue lens on there, even though it's green lens, but hey, what are you gonna do? <laughs> so, it does come with a decent amount of stuff, like your, you know, it's it's well wrapped up in this thing. Uh, you got your instructions. It does come with a battery and these scope caps, which I did not really seem to want to use because they are a little flimsy, a little cheap. I can't even, there we go. I mean, they work, they got plenty of springiness and stuff, but I don't know, they just don't really feel very high quality. Plus, I mean, I never really use scope or, uh, caps anyways, so I just left them off. And last but not least, it does come with some rings. These are high profile uh, scope rings, I believe one inch. And it, you know, they fit on a 20 millimeter Picatinny rail. But, oh yeah, by the way, it does come with a microfiber cloth. But as you can see, I just went with one of these, um, I forgot exactly what you call them, but these mounts that allow the scope to sit a little bit forward because right here is would be the last slot in the Picatinny. And as you can see, if you put a ring right here, it would hit the turrets, which would make me have to back the scope um, that way. And yeah, I wouldn't have proper eye relief. So. I do, you know, if you use a scope, more than likely you're going to be using something like this kind of amount anyways. So I just chose not to use the scope rings. Whoops. It does have a one-year warranty, so that's nice. All right, let me go and get all this stuff out of here. And before we get into the uh, rest of the shooting footage, uh, I just want to talk about the A2 upper right here, or A2 style. It's actually an A4 style, but Aero Precision likes to say A2 because, you know, A2 is trendy right now. So everybody's selling things as A2 style just because it has the handguard, but technically the flat top, yes, is an A4. But anyways, I went ahead and took off the uh, carry handle uh, rear sight that came with it. And in the shooting footage, I didn't have this rear side on here but I just went and threw it on there afterwards so you can see that you can definitely fit a rear side back here with this scope on top it doesn't get in the way or this front sight right here does not get in the way of the um, view of the scope so at least at this height so even though it looks like it should be in the way it really isn't I don't really know exactly how that works but <laughs> it works just fine but man oh man is this thing accurate Holy cow. So out at 500 yards, I was actually still grouping really nicely with this thing, even though I couldn't even see my shots anymore. I'll go ahead and roll in a picture I took after the um, uh, shooting was complete when I was going to retrieve the target. And I was just blown away to see that I was shooting high, but there it was still a very tight group right in the middle. I mean, this thing, this scope was zeroed absolutely perfectly, especially as far as windage went. And uh, this uh, Aero Precision 20 inch upper right here was just such an accurate rifle. Um, yeah, I just absolutely love this thing. This thing reached out to 500 yards with really no problem. And I'm sure I could probably reach out way further, probably out to 700 yards. And um, I might just have to do that one day. But I guess that's about it. I don't really want to talk about the upper actually too much because I do have a full dedicated video. I just wanted to do an update uh, specifically on the accuracy because in that last video, I just had this carry handle and I did not have a optic on there and with an optic I just wanted to test the accuracy uh, the long range accuracy I should say of this Aero Precision 20 inch A2 style upper so without further ado um, 
let's go ahead and just get into the shooting footage and we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, we're out here at 300 yards right now. Uh, this is kind of a part two of the Aero Precision 20 inch upper. It's a one in seven twist. So it does really good with some heavier bullets like these Frontier um, 75 grain 5.56. And it's a boat tail hollow point match grade bullet, uh, specifically a Hornady bullet. These are actually my favorite long range. Uh, 556 slash 223 cartridges. Um, I know they have 77 grainers out there, but for price um, to performance, I'd say these are some of the best that you can get on the market. Uh, recently they've been expensive, but I think I got these for like 60 cents a round way back when before things got all crazy. Um, but it does really good out of this Aero Precision 20 inch upper because, like I said, it is a one in seven twist. If y'all don't really know, the higher the twist rate, the uh, uh, or I should say the faster the twist rate, the better it stabilizes heavier projectiles. So one in seven is definitely better for a 75 grainer uh, compared to like one in eight or one in nine twist or even a one in 12. But we're also gonna be taking a look here at this UUQ, um, let's say it's a three by nine scope, really cheap scope. And I just kinda wanna see how it does with um, some long range testing. It is a mill dot scope, so it should be easy to at least sort of arrange the uh, target. Another f factor to consider is that it is 40 degrees out here. There is no wind whatsoever, but it is cold, so there's gonna be significant bullet drop, and uh, especially with 75 grainers. But right now, this is actually uh, zeroed at 200 yards, and it was dead on at 200 yards so 300 shouldn't be too much of a problem we're definitely going to push it back to 400 and hopefully if we still have some sunlight even though there's no sunlight um but it, you know if it, as long as we still have some light left in the day i'll try and push it out to 500 but not going to promise that but we'll definitely get out to 400 so i already got this uh loaded up uh, these are 10 round mags, but uh, once you put this little ranger plate on the bottom, I think you, you can only stick nine rounds in here. So I've got nine rounds loaded up. Um, so far, I will say this uh, UUQ has been pretty decent in this low light condition. Um, actually, I think that this is gonna be a really good test because of the low light conditions that we have. And right now at 300, I can see the target pretty well. So, without further ado, let's go and just take some shots. So since this is zeroed at 200, I'm going to uh, aim at the very top of the target and just see where we're hitting right now. Yeah, we hit. We hit low, obviously, <laughs> but I think I'm just going to use the first mill dot. That is dead center. Holy cow. All right. So, so far the mill dots are adding up, at least with the uh, 75 grainers. Piece of cake. Holy cow. I didn't think 300 yards was going to be that simple. They're grouping really nicely right in the middle. We'll go down and take a look because I know you guys can't really see what's going on. But um, another little excuse that I have this is a mil spec trigger. However, it's um, a polished mil spec trigger, so it's smooth, but it does have about a seven pound pull weight, maybe six, but it's definitely not a match grade trigger. So doesn't seem to be hampering me too much. Let me go ahead and 
load up another nine rounds here. And so far, there's not too much like fogging going on or anything like that. It is a cheap optic. The one thing that's really cool about this scope is the price point. I mean, it's just it's right now it's actually under fifty dollars, but it's usually fifty on Amazon. So being able to push this thing out and kind of test its limits should be kind of fun. But right now, no big deal at three hundred yards. I don't know if I'm hitting all those shots, but you can definitely rapid fire uh, with decent accuracy. <laughs> I don't know how I missed or how I uh, hit that last shot because I thought I missed it. But all right, I mean honestly, 300 yards is no big deal. I don't even really want to keep wasting ammo at 300, so we're gonna push it back to 400. So that's pretty impressive. They're all mostly right there in the middle. Uh, the few flyers are just from rapid firing, but every shot that I took when I was, you know, really trying to uh, concentrate, all hit right there in the middle. In about maybe like a four inch group, something like that. Four inches at 300 yards is pretty darn good. Uh, so not only is the scope able to, you know, reach out that far, but the rifle itself is able to keep extreme accuracy all the way out to 300 and we are shooting from right about there so quite a long distance but we're going to push it back a little bit further now out to 400 yards not too much wind just a little bit All right, we're at 400 yards. See how it looks through the scope. I've actually got it set to infinite right now. Um, you're able to set, adjust the uh, objective lens, the focus to, uh, I guess it's like 10 yards all the way up to 200, but then after 200 it goes to infinite. So you can't really adjust the focus anymore. But yeah, I could. I can see the target pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and skip the um, second mill dot. Now I'm going to go to the third mill dot, I think. Let's see where this is hitting. Trying all the different mills to see if I can find which one to use. That was a big boom from the neighbors. All right, Let's see if I can just find where the point of aim is. There it is. Wow. There's not much of a drop at all. I was uh, I was going to skip that second mill dot, but I think I have to use the second mill dot. Yep. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I just got to use the second mill dot. Wow, at 400 yards. 
That wasn't me. The neighbors are shooting. No big deal now. <laughs> All right. So glad I point, found the point of aim. I was a little worried there for a sec. So, let's go and load up nine more rounds real quick before we move it out to 500. Because, yeah, we're going to have to definitely do 500 yards before we totally lose sunlight here. I just loaded up six more rounds. I think I hear a helicopter coming. Or... <laughs> What's up, Ed? <laughs> that was funny. That was the uh, caretaker, Ed. He's a good guy. Coming up on his uh, ATV, I thought it was a helicopter there for a second. <laughs> Alright, so let me just fire off these six rounds real quick and then we'll push it out to 500. Because we are rapidly losing light right now. But still pretty good with the scope, that's for sure. This uh, cheap UUQ, um, I kind of forgot exactly what it's called, but the 3x9. And I can still see the target pretty well not too foggy or anything yeah there's no light out here so there's barely any light coming in so let's go ahead and see yeah I already loaded it up okay let's do these last six at 400 yards No problem whatsoever. That's awesome. All right, real quick, we're gonna push it out to 500. I'm only using the second mill dot, that's crazy, at 400 yards. You know, zeroed at 200 with 75 grain bullets. So I was expecting much more of a drop, but doesn't seem to be the case. You know, it's 40 degrees outside, so definitely thought with some cold air, with a heavier bullet, you're gonna see a lot of a drop, but not the case today, so, okay. Let's go push out the four, uh, 500. All right, I got the target back at 500 yards now. Uh, took off the sunglasses because we definitely don't need them. It is getting dark out here for sure. But I'm going to fire off these nine rounds here. Might be the last nine rounds we fire off. Hopefully I can find the point of aim right away. I guess I'm going to start with the third mill dot and go from there. You know, I'm going to be very surprised if the third mill dot is actually what I have to use. Oh yeah, though. We're still nice and clear through the scope. Let's see how it does with the third mill dot. No way. No way. You serious? <laughs> that was the third mill dot. I'm not entirely too sure where that hit though. But let's try it again. Wow. This, oh my gosh. All right, let's stop talking about the scope for a second. This Aero Precision 20 inch upper with a one in seven twist, government profile barrel, I think, uh, is so accurate. This thing is just such a beast.
<laughs> Another hit. I missed on the last shot. I cannot end on a miss. We gotta load up another nine rounds. When I was just shooting at 400, uh, Ed, you know, who just came up, he was like, you're hitting every single one. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Just seeing what other people say, but I'm just really impressed. This is a, a really nice upper with, uh, you know, especially coupled with the KP-15 right here. Uh, that This uh, KP KE Arms KP-15 polymer lower. The aero precision upper is just extremely accurate. And this cheap little uh, UUQ right here is doing such a good job too, so. Actually, you know what? I totally forgot, this thing is illuminated. Let's see what it looks like. Oh wow, that's really bright. Okay, let's. Uh, that's green real fast. Turn it to red. Okay. I think I actually like the green better. Let's try and use it. All right, last nine rounds here. There it is. Starting to miss here. I think, can't tell from my breath, the temperature really dropped all of a sudden. So I think the bullets are probably dropping because uh, it's much denser air right now. Right there, that was a hit. Last round. I'm gonna call it. So let's go back inside and I'll give you my final thoughts. So this thing did phenomenal. It did so well. I'm so happy with this. Uh, not only the scope, but with the A2 upper. But I don't, again, I don't wanna talk about the A2 upper too much. If you wanna check out the dedicated video I have to it, go ahead. But this UUQ 3x9 AO scope did just fine in low light conditions and reaching way out to 500 yards so i got really no no problems other than the two minor quality control issues the fact that this thing started coming unscrewed is really not that big of a deal i will say though that this would the scope right here would probably be really great for any beginner or budget-minded shooter uh, obviously people that are Going to shoot 500 yards or around, you know, extreme long range, uh, typically will invest in a high-end scope, but this UUQ 3 to 9 by 40 uh, can certainly be up for the task. But I do think it would be perfect on a 22 mag or 17 HMR, since uh, it did well with little light and virtually no fogging. I think this would also be good to, uh, or be a, a good scope to throw on a uh, budget hunting rifle. So with all that being said, it's just, it's a good scope. I definitely do recommend it. I didn't really have any major problems. So 
I can't really say that. You know, you shouldn't go out and buy it. I think it would do just fine. More than likely, if you do get one, it's not going to come with the two quality control issues that I had. It's probably going to come from the factory, just the way that they, you know, UUQ intended. They did not cherry pick this one for me. They just sent it straight from Amazon. So they probably didn't even know what they were sending me. So again, um, aside from just two quality control issues, it's a great scope. You know, I definitely recommend. So that's about it. Thanks for watching.